Tucked among the horse farms of Wellington, Florida, sits the Panther Ridge Sanctuary, home, haven, and hope to some of the world's most beloved and endangered big cats. Panther Ridge started from a lifelong love of big cats. I set to work and got the permits and licenses to obtain a small exotic cat to have as a personal pet. And I did that in the early 90s, and um, my first cat was an ocelot. And then some years later, uh, someone told me about a little sickly cougar, and I unfortunately made the mistake of going to see it. And it had to come home with me. And, well, if you had two, then I guess there was room for three. and. Once there was three, it was time to think about buying a farm. When I first got Amos, I, I bottle raised him. And I used to carry him around in my shirt like a little papoose. And he, I'd take him to the grocery store. I'd take him out to dinner. Um, he went everywhere with me, 24-7. About three and a half years ago, I heard of Judy. So I called her up and I said, um, I'd like to volunteer for you. And she said, nope, I don't accept volunteers. <laughs> I don't like my cats exposed to people, and then they don't come back. So I said, no, really, really, I want to volunteer for you. And she said, no, I really don't accept volunteers. So I said, okay, can I come out? So I made an appointment, mm -hmm. and I came out on a Sunday and had a tour. And we hit it off, and I've been here for three and a half years. I love Amos's mambo dance when he's really hungry. <laughs> Amos does this mambo dance when he's hungry to let you know that he's ready. And it's absolutely adorable. He jumps real high and he does this wiggle and that says, okay, I'm ready to eat now. You know what, why don't I hide a couple of these up in the tree? I'm hiding food for Amos. Make him work for his, work for a few groceries. Make some, smell out. And there are days he'll do it and there are days he prefers it in his silver bowl. Right. But we'll see what we can get him to come up and do here. Go get it. No, I'm not getting it for you. Mom, <laughs> no, it's you have. It's not that hard, Amos. They're considered the smartest cats. First of all, there are not many cheetah in Florida that you can actually see. There are some at Disney, but you can go out on a ride at Disney and a tour of Animal Kingdom, and on any given day, not see one. Nowhere in this say three or four county area are there any and I just thought it would be a wonderful opportunity and I guess my interest was really peaked several years ago when I went to the Cincinnati Zoo and I actually saw cheetahs run and they it was just a, a life-changing experience when you see these things flash by at 60 miles an hour it is truly amazing and then a couple years later, I actually went to Africa and went out to see, visit some of these projects out in the wild that are helping to save the cats. And it really kind of put the cement on it. Uh, it, it just was something that I wanted to be a part of. So we're going to pre prepare a little bit of a snack for these cheetahs so they can come in. Uh, otherwise, they prefer to stay out in their big field all day. So we lure them in with a little bit of something yummy that they like to eat. In this case, it's going to be just a little bit of horse meat. So here's our salmon oil. And here is a scoop 
for vitamins. And this is all, this is a balanced vitamin, but it also contains taurine, which is very important for cats. Wait a minute. I actually uh, met these cats as six month old babies in Africa and then didn't see them again until they got off an airplane in Atlanta as two year olds. Nothing like a meal, a good scratch, and an instant nap. <laughs> I've got four clouded leopards that came to me from the Audubon Zoo after Hurricane Katrina. And about a month after the hurricane, a friend of mine who was running the Nashville Zoo called and asked if I could take four clouded's that were old cats, had been used in the breeding program, but were no longer necessary because their genes were overrepresented. These animals are endowed with a peculiar set of tools that enable them to hunt huge paws. They're able to get good purchase on limbs when they fly through the trees. Uh, they can rotate their hind limbs so they can climb straight down a tree, almost leaving their front feet free huge teeth so if they catch hold of something it is unlikely that it gets loose and the long tail for balance which gives them their acrobatic abilities so they are quite formidable as a predator These are such incredible animals. It took me probably three weeks of just sitting in here when they first came, totally ignoring her. And then one day she walked up and sat on my foot. And that was her overture to me that we could be friends. One of the hallmarks of this place is that we really try to spare no expense for the health of these animals. We really want them to live the fullest and best life they can. We use really top quality products to feed the animals and we go through about 100 pounds of beef, chicken, horse meat, lamb, organ meats uh, a day. Yes. Oh, for God's sake. There. All right. Did 
this really, this really belongs to him. Mejor que nada? Sí, no, sí. Okay, we're in luck. Oh, no, está bien. Perfecto. Perfecto. <laughs> Because so many of these animals are endangered, it's really important to make sure they stay around so that they can be great ambassadors and people will be able to see them because we don't know how many years from now they won't be around. There are estimates that by 2040 or 2050, all the great predators of the world will be gone. It's a pretty sad thought.